Hey everyone, it's KitKat. Um, I just got off of work that not that long ago and decided to sit down outside and uh, try to do a vlog. This is my sixth time trying to do it between Amish people walking beside, <laughs> walking around trying to figure out what I'm doing and getting body slammed by every single, you know, fat ass bee. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. But I just wanted to do a video, actually a vlog, about what it's like to have Bell's palsy and um, having a stroke. So I'm going to do a little story time. So I've had Bell's palsy ever since I was six years old. Bell's palsy has to deal with the nerve endings um, in one's face. Not to be compared to Alexander Graham Bell, who did the telephone. Different guy, different invention of... One is in medicine, the other one was actually an inventor. So, just the edge imitate you on that one. I get, believe me, I get a lot of people asking me that. So, anyway, um, but... I got Bell's palsy from chicken pox. Um, it was unexplained. Um, it was basically a freak accident. Um, if it's not, if chicken pox is not um, taken care of, it can actually harm your nerve endings. And so I was, I had a really high temperature. Um, of 105, I believe. Yeah, if I remember right. Um, I almost died. So, um, but luckily I was able to survive that and only walk away with Bell's palsy. And, uh, you can definitely tell when I smile. Uh, luckily, I was a... I didn't have a long time for um, having bullies because uh, it was only in high school that I was bullied. After I graduated, I basically was like, forget you, I'm not doing it, bye. And um, realized that uh, it was only my teenage years that people actually gave a crap about what you look like. Uh, needless to say, my Bell's palsy is usually on the back burner because a lot of people, um, only see the sweetheart in me. I personally think that I'm a cabbage, or that I'm a, a sour patch kid, depending on who you are, so, um, but anyway, I was... For over 30 years, I was able to love myself enough to realize who my friends are. I had a really awesome support system of really good friends who, if at any time, thought that I needed to feel awesome, you know. I always had someone say, you're cute, you're beautiful, and you always have that one particular guy that wants to get into your pants and always uh, gives you the whole you're beautiful crap um luckily being um being able to have those people even the weird creepy dude uh the creepy ass people I was able to love myself just the way I I needed to be Having 30 years to deal with uh, Bell's palsy, that is awesome. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't until last year that all of that changed. <laughs> I know one of my videos, I actually touched a little bit on having a stroke. Now, mind you, I, I did, I do have Bell's palsy still. So, um, imagine 
going 30 years without having to worry about your face and all of that stuff. Finally able to love yourself and then one day waking up to having a stroke. Or what, you know, is equivalent to a stroke. And that's a little daunting. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it was hard um, because... and. For most stroke victims, it's always a surprise. Um, granted, because we live in a society of always on the go, you always have to do something. I don't like sitting down and being bored for long. So I'm always working. And, um, but the only tall tale sign of the stroke that I had was I had three days of excruciating headache. Like, for three days of hell, I, I couldn't, nothing worked. Nothing ever worked with the headache. And um, I remember on the third night, I actually went to bed and... Uh, put a pillow over my face because I couldn't deal with it anymore and I don't remember much of the stroke itself when it happened I just remember waking up feeling really odd like the oddest you know when you wake up and you're like well you know something is off like my whole equilibrium shifted um I realized that, yeah, the first thing that came to mind was touch my face, and I realized that my face was different, like my whole body was different. Um, it wasn't, now mind you, I actually went to work after I suffered a stroke. Yeah, had no idea, it didn't dawn on me that something, you know, medically wrong was happening to me until I walked or until I uh, drove to work. Halfway to work, I was like, I think I severed a stroke. Okay. And there was really nothing to do. I, I think the reason why I went to work was just to make sure <laughs> that people knew that I was okay. Um, and to hear from other people that I was okay. I think that's the only reason why I went to work. Um, needless to say, being in a pandemic, that actually helped wearing a mask because only people see my glasses and my eyeballs and that's it. So um, I'm thankful to say that I did go to the ER after work that night and um, it turns out that I had a Bell's palsy stroke, meaning that the stroke itself um, mimicked an actual stroke, but it was because of the Bell's palsy, um, which I already had. Um, nothing, luckily nothing serious came out of it except for more droopiness of the face um and I remember not I was so pissed off saying uh not being able to say the color purple for for oh the color blue because I couldn't say I couldn't mouth out the word buh I couldn't say certain words and it was really pissing me off but that's for another vlog um, but I just wanted to let people know that, you know, just because you have something doesn't mean people have to know about it. Yes, people know that I have Bell's palsy, but my, I'm sure as hell not going to let anybody bring me down on that because there's more issues in the world than just worrying about one person having Bell's palsy. I mean, it's easy. So. But, thank you for listening. <laughs>